Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Give God some praise right there. If you're grateful and thankful that you're in God's house, rest on your feet as we go forth in praise and worship. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some glory. Tell God how much you love him, how much you adore him, how much you care for him. We love you, Jesus. We honor you and we bless you. We give you praise. We give you worship. Come on, hang on the bed and give God some worship. Give Jesus some praise. Let the King of Glory come in. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and battle. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And say, Let the King come in. Oh, Lord, the Bible say, Let the King come in. Come on in, King. King Jesus, come in and have your way. Say, Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and get started with some praise and worship. Um, I'm, we're going to go old school today, okay? I know, know that everybody should know these songs. And so uh, our first song will be, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Our second song is going to be, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. And we will end with, I bless thee, O Lord. All right? Come on. We're going to do some, some call and response, all right? Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I will enter his gate with the 
thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, yes, I will rejoice for he has made me One more time, I will rejoice for he has made me Yes, hallelujah. We glorify you, God, in this place. We lift you up, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee. Oh, yes, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With my hands lifted up. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise with a heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee O Lord well let him hear you say I will bless thee O Lord I will bless thee Lord I will bless thee O Lord with a heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee O Lord I will bless thee O Lord I will bless thee O Lord with a heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee O Lord Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Give him some worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. Not some other time, all times. And his praises shall continually be in our mouths. Thank you, Minister Miss School, for leading us in praise and worship. Tell your neighbor it's time to pray. No, talk to them. It's time to pray. Please remain standing at this time. Pastor Jeremy Butler from Freedom Life Church will lead us into prayer as well as reading the scripture. Remain again standing for the prayer and scripture. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's look to the Lord, shall we? Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name above the earth. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. And as we have come together with one voice to lift up the name of the Lord, we honor your presence tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you have inhabited this very space. Father, your word says that where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Father, today I pray, Lord, for freedom in the spirit. Lord, that you would bless this that is about to take place tonight. Father, you said whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So, Father, tonight we thank you for agreement with the heavenlies. And God, here as we stand in your presence, I pray, Lord, for an anointing that destroys yokes. God, that this won't just be another service, but that your presence will go without restriction tonight. Father, we yield to you. We thank you, Lord, that in this consecration service, we can still see signs, miracles, and wonders. We thank you that you've come to set the captives free. We thank you that in your presence, there's healing tonight. We thank you that in your presence, there's deliverance tonight. We thank you.
Thank you that we shall not leave this place the same way we've come because we're in the presence of the one true God. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, that you pour out your spirit like never before. God, release a wind from heaven that should blow from the north, south, east, and west. I pray for an anointing like anointing before. God, that you will pour out afresh on us your spirit from heaven. Thank you, God, for your blessing. Thank you for your preeminence. Thank you for your prominence, your provision, your protection, and Lord, for your power. We count it done in Jesus' name. All God's children, will you shout amen in the house? Amen. amen. And amen. Our scripture reading tonight will come from a very familiar passage of scripture. And that of Psalms, the 23rd chapter. Amen. Some of you know how to quote it from memory. As do I, but I'm not going to take any chances. <laughs> Amen. Will you recite this with me together in unison? The Lord is my shepherd, shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the UPCAG Midwest District 2022 Spring Conference. On behalf of the Midwest District presiding elder, Pastor Lydia Thomas and our executive board, we're so glad, we're so grateful and thankful for being here with you today. We also welcome everyone that's joined us on Zoom. God bless you. You can put in the chat, uh, praise the Lord. And we thank you for joining us by the way of Zoom. Do we have any visiting pastors in the midst of us? If we do have any visiting pastors, could you please stand? God bless you. We would like to uh, welcome you. And um, if you would like to join us here on the pulpit, God bless you anyway. Uh, God bless you. Give him a hand clap. We're here to celebrate those who have answered the call of God on their lives. To all the friends and family who came out to celebrate their loved ones, welcome. At this time, we would like to acknowledge our Midwest District pastors and their years of service to their ministry. From Zion Temple Pentecostal Church, Pastor Robert Swain been pastoring for 34 years. Say amen for that. From Progressive Beulah Pentecostal Church, our UPCAG International Presiding Elder, Pastor Thomas Barclay, been pastoring for 27 years. From End Times Ministry, our Midwest District Presiding Elder, Pastor Lydia Thomas, been pastoring for 21 years. From Christ Deliverance Pentecostal Church, Pastor Sammy Rover, been pastoring for 21 years. From Grateful Gospel Pentecostal Church, Pastor Louise Dixon, been pastoring for 21 years. From Freedom Life Church, Sir Jeremy Butler, been pastoring for six years. Full Gospel All Nation Pentecostal Church was founded in October 1st, 1948. They've been founded for 73 years. Giving them a hand clap. We're so thankful. We're truly thank thanking God for every pastor in our Midwest district for their faithfulness to each ministry and the call of God on their lives. If you don't know anything else, but please pray for your pastor. Those that gave a round of applause to their pastor, you better be praying for them because the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But how many know that God said he promised life and that more abundantly? But he said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, 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 you don't like it, pray. 
it's a heaven open over our pastors and our leaders. We pray that God give them strength. Give them a hand clap again. And then clap those, we'll put those same hands together for the offering. We're inviting our Midwest District deacons to come forth, our Midwest District deacons to come forth. How many know that God loves a cheerful giver? He promised in his word that he will give back, press down, shaken together, and running over. How many love to give and give cheerfully? So this is the time that all can participate. Please follow the instructions of our deacons. Say amen as they come. that they may pass them out. Oh, I'm okay. The envelope's up here, so we're asking our ushers to come and get them and then pass them out. So if you need an envelope, raise your hand. Man, before we ask our ushers to escort every uh, everyone up from the back first, and then around here, turn to your seats. Amen. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this offering, Lord Jesus. We thank you for those that give and those that have a desire to give but unable. And we're asking you to bless the Lord Jesus. Return it back into the saints, Lord Jesus. 30, 60, and 100 fold. This ass in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Ask everyone to stand at this time. Everyone to stand at this time. And we're going to ask our ushers to escort them up to the front. Everybody say, Blast, 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 Blast. Blessed, blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the fields, we're blessed when we come and when we go, we pass down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease, for the devil is defeated, we are blessed, everybody say blessed, 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 blessed. blessed. Blast, 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 blast. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the fields, we're blessed when we come and when we go home. We cast down every struggle, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. Wait a minute. Wait in the midnight hour. God's going to turn around. It's going to work in your favor. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn around. And around. And around. And around. And around. Everybody say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say yeah, 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 yeah. 
Amen. God bless you and thank you. At this time, we will have a sermonic solo by our lady, Yvette Barclay. Following the solo, our elder Donald Miskell will introduce our speaker, speaker of the hour. Please say amen as she comes. And amen. Oh. Amen. Ordinary. Ordinary people. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name, oh God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just ordinary people, God uses ordinary people, he chooses people just like you and me who are willing to do as he commands. God chooses people that will give their all. No matter how small your all may seem to you. Because little becomes much as you place it in the master's hand. Just ordinary people. My God uses plain old ordinary people. Oh, yes, he does. He chooses people just like me and you who are willing to do as he commands. God uses and he chooses people that will give their all. No matter how small your all may seem to you because little becomes much as you place it in the master's hand. Just like that little lad who gave Jesus all he had, how the multitude was fed with the fish and the loaves of bread. Now what you have may not seem much, but when you yield it to the touch of the master's loving hand, yes, then you'll understand how your life will never be the same. Just ordinary people my God chooses plain old ordinary people he chooses people 
just like me and you who are willing to do everything that he commands God uses people that will give him all it doesn't matter how small your role might seem to you because little becomes much when you place it oh little becomes much oh little becomes much as you place it in the master's hand. Amen. You know, I always think that my voice is just carry. I have a deep voice, so people say my voice carry. I've been given the task of introducing the speaker of the hour. Amen. Um, the Bible says, I heard someone say, is there a word from the Lord? And I want you to know that this evening, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, that know those who labor amongst you. Amen. And I believe that I was given this task because I probably know this individual, I speak of the hour longer than anybody else living. Amen. She's my sister. Amen. I'm her, I'm her older brother. Amen. I watch, and she told me to keep this short and keep it sweet. Amen. Put a preacher behind the pulpit and tell him to keep it short, right? Amen. But the thing is, I watched her grow up. I watched her bud. Amen. I watched from childhood. I watched it from when we were, I used to drag her from church to church before my mother was saved. And we actually had a church home. And we just had a thing in us. We just wanted to go to church. And we would go to Catholic churches and Baptist churches and all these things. But I watched her grow. Amen. And I watched the Lord do a work in her life. Amen. You know, a lot of times it's kind of hard to say something. We have to think about something good to say about somebody. But I watched God work in her life. And I watched God elevate her. Amen. She is quite capable. She is quite able of breaking the bread of life to God's children. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand on their feet. As I present to some and introduce to others, the speaker of the hour our own presiding district elder in the person of Lydia Ouellette Thomas. Amen. Well, first of all, you may be seated. Amen. Amen. As we bow our heads and pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you just for an opportunity to be in your presence one more time. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy towards us. God, even as we further go the service on this evening, we ask God that you speak through your holy word. Have your way. Let flesh sit down. That you may be glorified. That you would give us a word on this evening. Give us ears to hear and a heart to receive. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Not sure about you, but I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Just glad to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. Amen. Um, I'm so glad for my sister in the Lord, Lady Yvette Barclay, as she sang that song, Ordinary People. Amen. That's one of my favorite songs. Uh, I guess I drive my husband crazy 
because I play songs over and over and over again. And um, as I do that, he escapes to the basement. So he doesn't have to hear it. Uh, but there's a couple reasons that I, I play that song. I put it on repeat. I guess because it defines me. Because I understand that uh, I'm just an ordinary person and there's nothing extraordinary about me. Um, and I'm reminded that it is just the Lord that has brought me to where I am today. And then I do it to remind myself of that, lest I get carried away. You know, that God, he's not looking for superstars. He really is not. He's just looking for plain or ordinary people. And the song says that they're willing to do as he commands. So thank you for singing that song. Uh, let, let me, I'm slowing it down because we've just been rushing through the service. You know, they're not doing that on their own. They're doing that because I said, we have so much to do this evening, but I wanna slow it down. Um, I understand my assignment on this evening. Uh, the program said a sermonette. And I understand that a sermonette is a mini sermon. So these are my notes. It's one and a half sheet. And because my vision is not that great, it's a big font. So you don't have to worry. There's not a whole lot here. But I wanted you to know that I waited before the Lord because um, I have, I said, Lord, give me a message. And the Lord didn't say a thing. And I waited and I played music and I prayed and the Lord said nothing. And I wrote out a few things and I said, okay, that's it. And the Lord said, not it. And I scrapped it and wrote out something else. And I said, that's it. And he said, not it. And, and so on yesterday, and let me tell you how close I was. On yesterday, I had a message and I had to hit delete. And so I believe I have a word from the Lord. Amen. And it's, it's not long. I want to speak a little bit about fruit. So if you go with me to the book of Mark, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. So let me do this expeditiously. Mark the 11th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. I'm going to read through the 14th verse. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out into Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Amen. So as we read this text, we find that a lot of the text that I just read is rather unremarkable. I mean, it simply tells us, first of all, that Jesus is traveling. And then it tells us that he is hungry. 
Next, he sees a fig tree that appears healthy and has lots of leaves on it. And he approaches it looking for figs and finds that there are none. But the notable part of the text is that when he finds none, he curses the tree. So what does this text speak to us on this evening? If we're going to, to note anything about the text, primarily it is that Jesus has no use for a tree that does not bear fruit. So let me repeat that again, because it is the focus of the message on this evening. Jesus has no use for a tree that does not bear fruit. We see this concept over and over again in the word of God. John 15, one through two says this, Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Then John 15 and 16 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed to you that you should go and bear fruit. I want us to understand that just like that fig tree, it is possible for us to be lovely, green, and flourishing to the eye on the outside and serve no real purpose. Jesus' analysis of us as ministers and as Christians, it's not whether we can dress the part or whether we can talk the part or whether we know how to act churchy. But our value is whether we can produce fruit. I want you to go with me because I'm all finished. When people come to us and they're hungry and they're broken and they're seeking help and they need solutions to their issues, the question becomes, do we have anything to offer them? Do we have any fruit? Or are we like the fig tree? Are we barren? Amen. Let us examine ourselves. Are we simply doing church or are we the church? Do we simply have the persona or are we the real deal? And I'm closing the book. Amen. There's a hurting world out there. There's a lost world out there. And they're seeking something. They're hungry. They're looking. And the question is, do we have any fruit? Do we have anything to offer them?
You know, some people will say, I'm talking to the ministers. I'm talking to the people that will be ordained. But I'm talking to every born again believer on tonight. Everyone that names the name of Christ. Let me speak to those that are hungry on tonight. There might be some in here that are seeking something. that are looking. You know, Jesus was, he went to the fig tree and he was looking for something to satisfy his physical hunger. But there are those that are looking for something to satisfy a hunger and they're not quite sure what that hunger is. All they know is what they have does not suffice. You know, there are people that are trying to quench that hunger with all kinds of things. Relationships don't satisfy. Money doesn't satisfy. You know, some of us have more money than we've ever had. Some of us thought that if we could just get the promotion, we'd be satisfied only to find out we are no more satisfied. But I wanna to speak to some people that are hungry. We can point you to someone who can feel that hunger Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth in me shall never thirst. You know, I can remember I spent so much of my life looking for something and I had no idea what I was looking for. I thought I could find it in a person. You know, I, I believe my husband loves me. But he could not meet that need. But I found that Jesus was the one that I was seeking. I want to take a moment and say, have you tried Jesus? If you are hungry, if what, what you're doing does not satisfy, Maybe you're looking towards the wrong source. And what I want to say, try Jesus.
Because if you go to that tree, you'll find what you're looking for. Amen. Amen. I want to pray on this evening before we transition into our other part of our service. I want to pray for us on this evening. I want everyone to close their eyes and bow your heads. If you're hungry on tonight or if you're seeking something and you're not quite sure what it is, I admonish you to try Jesus because he satisfies. Father God in heaven, we ask that you will look upon each one that is here on this evening. God, you see and you know us. You know our substance because you created us, oh God. God, we pray for those that are seeking and looking and hungry and dissatisfied. We asked, oh God, that you would draw them to you in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would meet that need, that you would quench that thirst. that you would feel that hunger. I pray God for those that are broken, those that are hurting, those that need you, oh God. Let them know that you stand ready to meet every need. God, you came to save. You came to heal. You came to deliver and set free. So God, I pray that you would touch each one in the name of Jesus. And God, you said that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray that you would save, that you would help, that you would deliver. If there's one on this evening that would like to give their life to the Lord, that would like to have a relationship with the Lord, I want you just to raise your hand on this evening. Amen. Father God in heaven, you see those individuals on this evening. I pray for them, oh God, that you would meet them at the point of their need, that you would do a new thing in their life, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you for what you have done and what you are going to do. God, I pray that you will continue to reveal yourself to them in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 We thank you, God, for all things. As we get ready to transition into our ordination and licensing service on this evening, we're going to ask Lady Barclay to come, and she is going to give us a song as our ministers get ready to go down, amen, and just line up down, um, amen, across the front, amen, 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 amen. We're going to ask all of our ordained, already ordained ministers, our pastors to go down, amen. And if you would just line up on the side for us, Amen.
am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee so draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to thy precious me now to thy service lord by the power of grace divine and let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will lost in thine so draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw Precious bleeding side, oh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. To the board and congregation, each of the candidates presented for licensing today has completed the following course of actions, acknowledgement of a call to ministry, an approved course of study, preparation for ministry in the local church, inclusive of a trial sermon with opportunities to engage additional ministerial activities. The culmination of this preparation was administration of a test designed to determine scriptural competency. Following licensing, each candidate must agree to continue their path in ministry preparation for the next level of ordination. We will now ask Pastor Barclay and Pastor Butler to present each of their candidates individually. Presiding Elder Lydia Thomas. 
it gives me great honor to present these candidates from Progressive Beulah Pentecostal Church to be licensed as ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our brother Sheldon Edwards. Our sister Athena Jackson. Our sister Carlin Lampton. Our brother Freddie Pinson Jr. Yes, he brought his family with him. Our sister Loretta Williams. Presiding Elder, Pastor Lydia Thomas, it gives me great pleasure to present to you these candidates for licensed ministry from Freedom Life Church of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Brother Dequel Pullum. And Sister Brandy Franklin. To our minister candidates, whereas you have confessed your calling to ministry, proven yourself to be doctrinally sound and obtained the approval of the United Pentecostal Council of Assemblies of God, Midwest District Executive Board, I inquire of you, have you considered seriously this biblical ministry to which you are called? Have you seriously considered the high level of integrity, morality and Christian living to which you are called. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, your personal Lord and savior? Do you promise to preach the, the divinely inspired and authoritative word of God concisely without deviating from or misrepresenting scripture? Based on your answers given, according to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, first through the second verse, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. At this time, we're going to ask Pastor Barclay to anoint each of our candidates. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Each one of our candidates will receive a certificate, amen, on today. And we're going to have our assistant presiding elder to simply read one of the certificates that they will receive. Call the young because they can read. You want the name or just leave the name blank? The United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God Incorporated, Midwest District. This is to certify that these candidates, having been called of God and recommended by the Credentials Committee, were set apart by the laying on of hands and prayer to the office and work of a minister of the gospel for as long as their life and doctrine should confirm to the Holy Scriptures and the disciplines and constitution of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God. If they should withdraw from the organization, we, the Credentials Committee, reserve the right to revoke said credentials following their resignation. We, the Credentials Committee of the aforesaid council, recognize and approve said licensing. They are, hereby, they are hereby authorized to minister in accordance with their position in the body of Christ. This license, however, does not permit them to serve the Lord's Supper without the assistance of an ordained minister, does not permit them to solemnize matrimony nor to officiate at funerals. Bow your heads. Father God in heaven, we thank you for each one that is standing in your presence on today. God, we thank you for this and this Christian journey that they have begun in ministry. God, we ask as they leave this place that you would go with them. I pray God that they would be used from their service on today. God, I pray that you would do great things through them and in them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you would use them in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would anoint their feet, oh God. I pray that you would anoint their hands. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray, oh God, that you would continue to bless them, bless their homes, bless their family. God, make them useful to the kingdom. In the name of Jesus. So God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Help them to be available yes. to you, oh God. God, we bless you in the name of Jesus. And we count it as done. You said if we ask anything in your name that you would do it. So we ask in Jesus' name. With the consent and approval of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God Midwest District Executive Board, we do issue you official credentials. Please note that in accordance to Article 10D of the Constitution and Discipline, credentials remain the personal property of the council and may be revoked for reasons of misconduct or disfellowship. Now, to the executive board and congregation, I now present to you the following individuals in their newly sanctioned calling. And as I call each name, I'm going to ask you to take a step forward as I introduce you to the congregation. Minister Brandy Franklin. <laughs> Minister DeQuayle Pulliam. Minister Loretta Williams. <laughs> Minister Freddie Pinson. <laughs> Minister Carlene Lampton.
Minister Afina Jackson. Amen. And Minister Sheldon Edwards. God bless each one of you, and we're just going to ask you to give them a right hand of fellowship as they go back to their seats. return to your seats. God bless you. At this time, we're going to move to the second part of our ceremony. Those that will have their credentials transferred to the United Pentecostal Council of the Assembly of God. This evening, it is an honor to celebrate the individuals that will have their credentials originally conferred by other organizations, officially recognized by the Midwest District of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God Incorporated. They serve as examples of faithful servants, waiting faithfully for due recognition without impatience or complaints, serving in many capacities, committed to the work of the Lord. Because of their diligence, prior experience, and years of service, they are presented for elevation. We will now ask Pastor Barclay, amen, to present the candidate names. There are two candidates, presiding elder yes. Lydia Thomas from our church. The first candidate, is Minister Brenda Williams, soon to be elder Brenda Williams. The second candidate is Minister Ann Smith. To our board and congregation, I am blessed because I have three candidates from End Time Ministries. They are Minister Sandra Houston, Lois Jackson. And Carolyn Miskell. Amen to our candidates. Whereas you have confessed your calling to ministry, proven yourself to be doctrinally sound, and obtained the approval of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God Midwest District Executive Board, I inquire of you, have you considered serious this biblical ministry to which you are called? I 
Have you seriously considered the high level of integrity, morality, and Christian living to which you are called? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, your personal Lord and savior? Do you promise to preach the divinely inspired and authoritative word of God concisely without deviating from or misrepresenting scripture? So based on the answers given and according to 2 Timothy 4 chapter, first through the second verse, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, continue to preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. At this time, we're going to ask um, Pastor Jeremy Butler to anoint each one of our candidates. At this time, our assistant presiding elder will pray for them. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you for these vessels of honor, me for the master's use, as they have already labored in your vineyard, Lord God, and submitted under your authority. And they already say yes to your will yes to your way yes we will obey and i hear the lord saying another level fresh anointing on this level said god in the name of jesus come on saints pray with me from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet in the name of jesus fresh oil from the holy ghost let out of their belly flow rivers of living water in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, as the deer penned for the water, so your soul will long after God. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your divine presence to rest upon them like never before. And we ask for new strength as they do your will, O oh God, to build an up of your kingdom, Jesus. We thank you as they go forth with preaching and teaching, ministering to the lost. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, give them a rhema word. Give them a fresh word. Give them an anointed word. Their souls may be saved, set free, and delivered. Rush in mighty wind. Move on these candidates in the name of Jesus. Let them not be the same again. Oh God, we thank you. Until they hear you say, Well done, thy good and faithful. No vision, no dreams. You don't want to know, Sanda. Empower your people now. Not to be seen or heard. Hide them behind the cross. Give them humility to do your will. Let them submit under your authority. And we thank you and we honor you. And then if those believers out in the audience say amen and thank God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We would like to note that as an ordained elder, that you are authorized 
to administer the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, to perform water baptism, to solemnize matrimony, and to feed the flock of God in accordance with your position in the body of Christ. Yes, Each one of you will receive your certificate. At this time, we would like to present to the executive board, pastors, and to the waiting congregation, each one of our elders at this time, Elder Brenda Williams. Oh, yeah. Elder Ann Smith. Elder Sandra Houston. Elder Lois Jackson. Elder Carolyn Miskell. Amen. They will receive their certificates at this time and also receive the right hand of fellowship. Look what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. The last portion, amen, is our ordination ceremony. To be ordained as an elder in the church and our organization is one of the highest honors possible and is not to be taken lightly. It implies being chosen for ministry years of spiritual preparation, a life of consecration, and the endorsement of church leaders. Elders are enjoined to willingly feed the flock of God, not for shameful or monetary gain. They are not to be arrogant or overbearing, but to be examples of Christian living setting a pattern of integrity. This evening, we have three individuals that have served in the position of minister and now will be ordained as elders. We're asking Pastor Barclay to present each of his candidates individually.
presiding so, elder. So we will, we will question them individually. <laughs> presiding elder Lydia Thomas. Yes. I consider it an honor to present Minister Lewis Isaac Jr. to this guy. God bless you. Minister Lewis Isaac Jr. Whereas you have confessed your calling to ministry, proven yourself to be doctrinally sound and obtained the approval of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God Midwest District Executive Board. I inquire of you, have you considered seriously this biblical ministry to which you are called? I have. <laughs> have you seriously considered the high level of integrity, morality, and Christian living to which you are called? I have. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God? And is he your personal Lord and Savior? I do. Do you promise to preach the divinely inspired and authoritative word of God concisely without deviating from or misrepresenting scripture or injecting personal opinion? I do. Based on your answers given, we charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Do the work of an evangelist. The Bible says, do the work. Not just wear the title, but do the work. We're going to anoint him. I'm going to ask all of us to come and lay hands on him as we anoint him. We're going to gather around. We anoint you in the name of the Son. Father, we thank you for this yielded vessel, this humble servant. Thank you that the spirit of David is upon him. Father, I pray, Lord, that this big shepherd you'd raise to be a king in the kingdom of God. I thank you, Lord, that no plan the enemy has set against him shall prosper. Father, I'm praying, Lord, that your angels would encamp round about him, cover him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Thank you for an anointing that destroys yokes. Thank you that the word of God is in his belly. I pray, Father, that as he opens his mouth, you will feel it. 
Thank you that mountains cast down at the authority you've placed within him. Father, Lord, this man of God, Lord, uh, that you would establish him in such a time, God, to be your man to reach the nations for your glory. I thank you for a peculiar anointing. I thank you for a, a, a spirit, God, that an anointing, God, that confuses the enemy. Thank you for a spiritual sound that brings about rain. God, we seal this prayer by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. With the consent and approval of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God, Midwest District Executive Board, we do issue you official credentials, affording you all the rights inherent with your office of elder. Amen. To the Executive Board and Congregation. I now present to you Elder Lewis Isaac Jr. Mr. Barclay, can you present your next candidate? Presiding Elder Lydia Thomas. Again, it gives me great privilege to present Minister Irma Childress. <laughs> to you. God bless you, Minister Irma Childress. Minister Irma Childress, whereas you have confessed your calling to ministry, proven yourself to be doctrinally sound, and obtained the approval of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God, Midwest District Executive Board, I now inquire of you, have you seriously considered this biblical ministry to which you are called? Have you considered the high level of integrity, morality, and Christian living to which you are called? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, and is he your personal Lord and savior? Do you promise to preach the divinely inspired and authoritative word of God concisely without deviating from or misrepresenting scripture apart from personal opinion? Based on the answers given, according to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter and the first through the second verse. I now charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ to preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, 
exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Be faithful unto the calling of the Lord. At this time, I'm going to ask your pastor to anoint you. I'm going. All of our work. We're going to all lay hands on her. Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for another vessel of honor. Me for the master's use. We thank you, Lord, that she loves you with all of her heart. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, because of that love that you so loved us. You gave your only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life from the very foundation of the world. God said, I called you, I handpicked you, I anointed you, and I love you. Oh, I'm that mercy. Fresh anointing ah, from the crown of the head to the soles of the fresh anointing ah, in the name of Jesus. Ah, so I'm gonna give you power to tread upon serpents ah, and scorpions ah, and even the power of the enemy. Ah, and nothing break breakthrough is coming. As you preach and teach the word of God with clarity and understanding. Hey, Fresh anointing, fresh revelation. You're breaking anointing. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. With the consent and approval of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God Midwest District Executive Board, we do issue you official credentials affording you all the rights inherent with your office of elder. Amen. At this time, amen. Amen. To our executive board and the congregation, it is my pleasure to now present to you Elder Irma Childress. Pastor Barclay, I believe that you have one additional candidate. Yes, her husband. <laughs> Presiding Elder Lydia Thomas. Yes. 
it gives me great privilege and an honor to present Minister Al Childress to you. It's amazing. Bless you. Amen. Amen. How wonderful to have a husband and wife team. Priscilla and Aquila. Amen. We're ministry together. Minister L. Childress, whereas you have confessed your calling to ministry, proving yourself to be doctrinally sound and obtained the approval of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God, Midwest District Executive Board, I now inquire of you. Have you considered seriously this biblical ministry to which you are called? Have you seriously considered the high level of integrity, morality, and Christian living to which you are called? Do you believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and is he your personal Lord and Savior? Do you promise to preach the divinely inspired and authoritative word of God concisely without deviating from misrepresenting scripture or injecting personal opinion? Based on your answers given and according to 2 Timothy 4th chapter verses 1 through 2, I charge thee therefore for before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. At this time, we are going to anoint and lay hands on you. Amen. Father, we thank you for the anointing of all that runs down from his head to Aaron's beard. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that will lead, guide, and direct him. Thank you for setting him apart for ministry, God. God, thank you for bringing him out of the darkness into a marvelous light. Thank you because you have no respect of person. Look where you brought him from. Oh, God, we give you praise. Oh, God, we give you glory. Lord, we thank you in advance for what will happen. The teaching and preaching and laying hands on the sick, prophesying and doing the work of an evangelist. God, we speak into his life right now that souls will be saved. Souls will be added to your kingdom for such a time as this. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory for the anointing that will flow in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. For the witness of the Holy Ghost that today will be a new day in his life. 
that the anointing will flow. We give you thanks, God. The praises shall come out of his lips and the glory shall be in his feet. That he will run with the vision of the work that you've called him to do. We give you praise and we give you a glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. With the sin and approval of the United Pentecostal Council of the Assemblies of God, Midwest District Executive Board, we do issue you official credentials affording you all the rights inherent with your office of elder. Amen. Amen. Now, to the Executive Board and congregation, it is my pleasure to now present to you Elder L. Childress. We now extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Thank you for your patience, amen. Amen, what a blessing. I believe that our district is being strengthened and enhanced, amen. We're getting ready to dismiss our service, but uh, we would be remiss if we did not mention our district mother on this evening, amen. Mother Brown, amen, being in our midst, amen, amen. Mother Brown, wave. Let everybody know that you are here. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. That's our Mother Brown. Amen. 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 We're so glad for you on this evening. Amen. All of those from Holland, Michigan that made their way here. Amen. At this time, I am going to give the service into the hands of our own international presiding elder in the person of Elder Thomas A. Barclay. Let's say amen for him. Wow, we're Pentecostals and we're getting out early. <laughs> oh, because we started a half an hour early, huh? I congratulate those of you that are, that have just been licensed into ministry. God has, God has work for you to do. Those of you that have been elevated into ministry, God has more work for you to do. And those of you that just was ordained, you have not seen anything yet. What the Lord has in store for you. Family and friends, thank you for coming to witness this. occasion our family in Benton Harbor Michigan pastor thank you for coming our family in Holland Michigan thank you for coming what our presider didn't say that our district mother just turned 95 years old
you, you look like you look when you were 60, mama. Well, Miss Clairol does wonders. <laughs> That's my mother, you hear me? That's my mama. Yeah. We salute you, Mother Brown, in your rightful position. I am so glad that you're still with us and calling upon the name of the Lord. I'm honored to serve under this presider. There's some, some weak men that can't serve under strong women. Did I, did I just use profanity? But I honor her in her rightful position as our leader of the Midwest District. I honor her. And I'll go on record and say that no one will dishonor her in her position as our leader. Amen. That we will, we will support her leadership Amen. and stand with her to carry out the mandates of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. She's been my associate on the international level for over 12 years. And she traveled the breath of this world with me. And God has elevated her to lead this district. And I told her as she took on this office, whatever she asked me to do, I will support her all the way because she's our leader. It's time to go home. Hold on one second. They, they, they told me that I have to give the announcement for tomorrow morning. For those of you that are staying in hotels that's in this, in, connected with the city, we need you to be at the church for breakfast and fellowship tomorrow at 930. So we're going to get you home right now so you can wake up for breakfast. Don't eat at the hotel. Just hang out here in the morning. And then at 1030 to 12, there are workshops that's going to be conducted by our pastor, Jeremy Butler. Is that great? And the other one is going to be conducted by yours truly, that we're going to show you how to expand the kingdom. And now uh, we're going to also take you on a tour of our new building down the street uh, that the Lord has given us. And uh, we're going to show you what it's going to look like and then what, it's, what it looks like right now. This has been a wonderful occasion. And I congratulate those candidates. We want you to stick around and take a picture. Uh, my, my ushers have been mandated to give you a, a gift as you walk out of the building uh, because we love you that way. Amen. Everybody that came, I want to make sure that you get something. I'm telling you, my mama taught me to give people gifts. If it's just a cookie, give them a cookie. <laughs> Yeah, so make sure, just take as many as you want and just snack on your way to your restaurant spot. <laughs> Pastor Kurt Swan, it's wonderful to have you here. If I was in the churches of God in Christ, they would treat me right. It's good to have you here. God bless you. Can you stand with me, everyone, as we close this service? I just want to praise you <laughs> forever, forever, and ever, and ever, for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory.
can you bow with me as we close this time together father thank you for allowing us to be a part of this sacred occasion of setting the individuals apart for ministry father i thank you because of your special recognition because you have no respect of person that you can use and choose whomever you would like to choose to do the work that you've called us to do so lord we thank you for the presence of the holy spirit that's here we thank you that you've protected us from dangers seen and unseen. Thank you for giving us good health and protecting us from this virus that we can witness this occasion so we can run with the vision that you've given us to do the work that you have placed within our hands. I pray that you would bless every family that's connected in this service today that you would crown them with your righteousness and allow your blessings to go with them. Protect all of us from danger seen and unseen and give us mercy as we travel to our separate destinations. We give you honor and we give you praise in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Can the church shout amen, amen, amen and amen. Reach your brother and sister in Jesus' name. The out of town guests, we do have bags for you out of town guests before you leave. We do have something to give you before you leave. Those that are from out of town. Deacon is Harden. Deacon is Harden. Deacon is Harden. Come to the front. Yeah, they. Thank you. Dickin is Harden. <laughs> Thank you. Man, I enjoy it. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. How's it going? It's great. Good. Good. Dickin is Harden. That she go, Lydia, says Minister. I got my water at the end of the service. Thank you so much, Deacon Harding. Even though we took it at the beginning of the service, I got my water at the end of the service. Thank you. Take the mic from him. Oh my God. Every Sunday.
if you're double parked, if you're double parked in the lot, if you're double parked in the lot, uh, we ask you to move your cars. Some people are trying to get out. If you're double parked in the lot, if you're double parked in the lot, we ask you to be courteous. And uh, if you're double parked in the lot, Thank you. 